Today, we're driving into a topic that might challenge some traditional views on training. It's time to stop training like a bodybuilder. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing inherently bad about bodybuilding. But if you're aiming for that lean, aesthetic physique, we might need to shake things up a bit. Stick around as we uncover the secrets to sculpting your dream physique in a more effective way. By the end of this video, you'll get a sense of what you're doing wrong and take a step closer to achieving that lean and muscular body that you've been just dreaming of. So let's get right into it. Here's what a bodybuilder looks like. And here is what a lean and aesthetic physique looks like. So what's wrong with training like a bodybuilder? A common pitfall in traditional bodybuilding is the overemphasis on isolation exercises, also called single joint exercises. You know, those exercises that target just one muscle group at a time. While they do have their place, relying solely on them might not be the best strategy for achieving that lean aesthetic look. Instead, we need to focus on compound movements, exercises that engage multiple muscle groups simultaneously. This not only saves time, but also promotes overall muscle development. Now, let's get to the meat of our discussion. A group of researchers conducted a study comparing multi-joint exercises to single-joint exercises in resistance-trained individuals. Surprisingly, both protocols resulted in similar increases in maximal strength for bench press and squat exercises. But here's where it gets interesting. The single-joint protocol showed a greater decrease in total load lifted compared to the multi-joint protocol and the internal training load was significantly lower in the single joint protocol. So what does this mean for our workout routines? Despite similar strength gains, the single joint exercises seem to be a bit inferior. They not only had a greater decrease in total load lifted, but also a lower internal training load. Another issue we encounter is the high volume, low intensity workouts. If you've been spending hours at the gym with moderate weights and countless sets, it's time to reconsider. These marathon sessions might not be the most effective approach for building that toned physique you're after. Now, the big question is, what components of the lean and aesthetic training program make this difference? So let's get into the nitty gritty of the science behind achieving that lean aesthetic body. First up, the importance of compound movements. Think squats, deadlifts, and bench presses. These exercises not only save you time, but also work multiple muscle groups simultaneously, giving you more bang for your buck. And this study right here proves that. 39 participants were randomly divided into three groups, the isolated group, the complex group, and the control group. The isolated group worked with two kilogram dumbbells, focusing on specific muscles. The complex group, on the other hand, engaged in a protocol with a series of complex exercises. The control group, well, they had no training at all. Results showed that the complex group experienced a significant improvement in muscular performance. Surprisingly, the isolated group didn't show the same level of improvement. What does this tell us? Here's the scoop. Isolated exercises are effective, but only when the goal is to strengthen a specific muscle group. However, for substantial improvement in muscle strength, building a leaner physique, these isolated exercises need to make way for more complex and closed kinetic exercises. Next, we're diving into the concept of progressive overload. It's not as complicated as it sounds. It's all about gradually increasing the stress on your muscles over time. This is crucial for building lean muscle and achieving that defined sculpted look. Here's a study that puts the spotlight on progressive overload. This study aimed to compare two resistance training programs, one that increased load while keeping repetitions constant, and the other that increased repetitions while keeping load constant. The goal? To see how these approaches affect lower body muscle hypertrophy, strength, and endurance in resistance-trained individuals over an eight-week period. Both progressions, repetitions, and load appear to be viable strategies for enhancing muscular adaptations over an eight-week training cycle. This only means that progressive overload is indeed a promising approach to building for aesthetics. So what does an effective training program look like to maximize gains and achieve a leaner physique? Now that we've explored the issues with traditional bodybuilding, let's focus on the blueprint for an effective training program that will get you closer to that lean aesthetic physique. First up, resistance training. 
If you're aiming for muscle definition, you need to incorporate resistance training into your routine. It's not as complicated as it sounds. We're talking about lifting weights. This type of training helps to tone and sculpt your muscles, giving you that lean and chiseled appearance. Take a look at this study. So the goal of this systematic review was crystal clear, to identify and evaluate literature that specifically tested how resistance training, the mighty weightlifting, influences body image in adults. So what's the verdict? Resistance training seems to hold the potential to elevate body image in adults, but, and it's a significant but, more high quality studies with rigorous testing methods and robust designs are on the wish list for future research. Now, always prioritize compound movements, like we talked about earlier. Forget about spending hours on isolation exercises. Squats, deadlifts, and bench presses are your new best friends. They engage multiple muscle groups, helping you achieve a more balanced and proportionate physique. And the best part, you'll spend less time in the gym and see better results. Next thing on our list is high intensity interval training, or as it's commonly known, HIIT. This is a game changer for fat loss. HIIT involves short bursts of intense exercise followed by brief rest periods. It's like a turbo boost for your metabolism, helping you burn calories more efficiently. Incorporating HIIT into your routine is a fantastic way to shed that extra body fat and reveal those hard-earned muscles. Take a look at this study. 30 participants, both male and females, were randomized into two groups. One group performed low-volume, high-intensity training, HIT, while the other group engaged in high-volume bodybuilding, 3ST, methods. Both groups trained twice a week for 10 weeks and showed significant improvements in muscular performance with substantial effect sizes. But guess what? HIT had significantly greater gains in muscle performance for the majority of tested exercises compared to 3ST. So what's the key takeaway? It seems that HIT takes the lead in maximizing those gains, going for a much leaner physique. And for all the cardio skeptics out there, we'll address some misconceptions. Cardio isn't the enemy when it comes to aesthetics. It plays a significant role in fat loss and why integrating them is key to reaching your physique goals. And here's a key point. Your training program needs to be well-rounded. It's not just about lifting weights. It's about finding the right balance. Combining strength training with cardio will give you the best of both worlds. Remember, our goal is to create a program that not only enhances your aesthetics, but also ensures your overall fitness. Let's dissect this study that dives deep into the dose-response association of aerobic physical activity and muscle strengthening exercise with none other than all-cause mortality. The goal of this study is to investigate the sweet spot when it comes to aerobic physical activity and muscle strengthening exercise. How much is just right to enhance our chances against all-cause mortality? Relative to those who engaged in no aerobic PA, engaging in just one hour per week led to a substantial reduction in mortality risk. The magic number? Three hours per week after which the risk plateaued. This held true for men and women, as well as for individuals younger and older than 60. But it's not just that. Muscle strengthening exercise stepped into the spotlight, conferring additional mortality risk reduction at just one time per week. However, the benefits seemed to taper off at seven times per week. With this, what is the key takeaway? The minimum effective dose for significant mortality risk reduction through aerobic PA is one hour per week of moderate or vigorous activity, with added benefits observed up to three hours per week. For our wiser population, small decreases in mortality risk were observed beyond this point. And don't forget about the bonus round. Incorporating muscle strengthening exercise one to two times per week provided additional risk reduction. Now that we've got the training part covered, you're probably wondering, what about diet and nutrition? What you eat plays a significant role in achieving your physique goals. Let's break it down. First and foremost, let's talk about the importance of a calorie controlled diet. It's like the foundation of your aesthetic journey. Consuming the right amount of calories is key to maintaining a healthy weight and achieving that lean physique. Let's unravel the effects of varying energy intake coupled with progressive resistance training on the holy grail of bodybuilding, muscle mass, and body fat. Let's take a look at this study. It's composed of 11 male participants, randomly assigned into two groups, one with higher energy intake, G1, and the other with moderate energy intake, G2. 
For body fat, significant changes were observed only in the higher energy intake group, showcasing a notable increase of 7.4% compared to a modest 0.8% in the moderate energy intake group, G2. As for muscle mass, both groups experienced significant gains. But here's the twist. G1 showed a greater increase, boasting a 2.7% growth, while G2 trailed at 1.1%. This only tells us that greater energy intake, coupled with the dedication of resistance training, led to more substantial gains in both muscle mass and body fat. It's a delicate dance between energy and training, with the results painting a clear picture of the impact of nutrition on body composition. Now, protein, the building block of muscles. If you're aiming for a toned look, ensuring an adequate protein intake is crucial. Protein helps preserve your hard-earned muscle mass, especially during periods of calorie deficit. So, whether it's chicken, fish, eggs, or plant-based sources, make sure you're getting enough protein into your diet. According to the American College of Sports Medicine, muscle protein synthesis should exceed muscle protein breakdown. And guess when this balance is at its prime? Right after a good workout. But here's the catch. How much protein should you be aiming for? If you're regularly hitting weights or training for that marathon, it's advised to consume between 1.2 to 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. Let's put this into perspective. Our hypothetical 75 kilogram individual should boost their protein intake from a baseline to a range of 75 to 128 grams daily. The good news, you can achieve this protein-packed goal through diet alone. No need for additional protein and amino acid supplements. It's about fueling your body right and letting it do the rest. Remember, it's not about starving yourself or following extreme diets. It's about making sustainable choices that align with your fitness goals. Moderation is key, and finding a balance that works for you will make the journey more enjoyable and long-lasting. The most important thing is to keep in mind that your training and nutrition go hand in hand. It's a partnership that will propel you towards your aesthetic goals faster and more efficiently. But here's something that you need to know. Consistency is your greatest ally. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is your dream physique. We'll delve more into making a consistent routine in this video right here.